Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viz. Uh, I recently reached out to someone at Oculus and they gave me the top four reasons why apps are being rejected for App Lab. So I figured I would compile this quick little video and give you a leg up on how to get approved in the App Lab market. So without any further ado, wait a second, please like and subscribe so that I can keep making these videos. And now let's get to it. Okay, so here we are on the Quest VRC guidelines page. And if you're not aware of this page, you should take a look at it. I'll link to it in the descriptions uh, because this is where you basically get a list of all the things that they're gonna be checking for, either if you're deploying to App Lab or the Quest store itself. So this will be a list of a bunch of different uh, things and you'll see that they're marked. Some of them apply to both Quest Lab or App Lab and the Quest Store and some only apply to the Quest Store. For instance, this one here where the game must run for 45 minutes without heating up and getting into power save mode. So that applies if you're trying to submit to the Quest Store, but not so much a big deal if you're submitting for App Lab. So uh, the number one issue on uh, the VRC guidelines that they're running into is Quest Asset 4 if we scroll down, you'll see it down here somewhere. Quest Asset 4 says the hero art must include the branding of the app centered in the image. And as you see, this applies to both. Now there's a document uh, that they have for their art and uh, I'll link to that in the description as well. Uh, but uh, it tells you right here that the, uh, the image must be centered in the safe area. So. You know, the image must be 3000 by 900 and it should have uh, the text describing or the logo uh, centered in that in the safe area. See this green area here is just half of the width uh, with a little 10 percent padding on the top and bottom. So you got to make sure that your logo is centered in this safe area. So that's the top one that they're having issues with. Uh, the next one in asset is uh, actually the last one, the, the fourth one that they're having issues with, but it's number three, which is the store cover art must not include text in the top or bottom 20% of the image. And that's in this document as well. If you come up here to the cover safe area, you'll see it says top and 20 or top and bottom 20% of the cover must be free of text. So. Again, uh, you've got to leave 20% of the image with no text uh, at all so that they can uh, use that for other purposes. So those are the two uh, image related ones that they are having issues with, number one and number four respectively. Um, the next issue that they're having is uh, Quest Functional 2, right? So let's find that up here. Quest Functional 2 says single player apps must pause when the user removes the headset or opens the universal menu. Now this one's a little tricky and in order to understand what's happening here, you have to be familiar with the lifecycle of Quest applications. And luckily they do have a page that says exactly that, what the lifecycle is for Quest and Rift applications. So you can look at this, I'll link to this in the description as well. And it basically tells you every event that fires and when it fires so that you can become familiar with what is supposed to happen when uh, you either take off the headset or you enter the dash menu. Uh, so that's a good reference, but we're gonna get into code to handle this because uh, this is a code problem. So I have an empty Unity project here. I'm using 2019 LTS. As always, I've got the uh, Unity XR package installed with the Oculus uh, setup there. We have an XR rig just laying on a plane and uh, that's pretty much all that's here except for this little ball up here. Um, that is my spawner. So what's going to happen here is this ball is basically just going to spawn more balls and they're going to fall to the ground. So I have this object here called the spawner and it has a script called spawner and it has a sphere with a rigid body so that gravity can pull the ball down. 
So that's uh, pretty much that. I'll show you the spawner code here in a second. But on the XR rig itself, I also have a script called headless, which is where I'll be doing the testing for the head removal, not the head removal, you don't want to take off your head, but your headset removal um, and pausing the game and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. All right, I'll try to break this down. Uh, we're using, uh, we have a variable called headset, which is going to use the Unity XR system. So uh, of course, make sure to have Unity XR using in there. And so it's a, it's a variable called headset and it is of type input device. So we're gonna set that up as the first thing. Then we've got two Booleans that are private. Uh, one is called is present and one is called is OAP, and I'll explain that more further down. And then in our start method, we're just simply getting the headset. Uh, we're going input devices dot get device at XR node, and then the XR node is head. So we're assigning the, uh, the headset to the headset variable. And then uh, we've created uh, several methods down here we'll, we'll get to. Um, there's this method called private void on application pause bool pause status. Now that's an event, a Unity event that gets triggered automatically by um, the XR framework whenever the headset is removed. Or, um, you know, if you if you go back and look at that page uh, with the life cycle, you'll see there's certain events that will trigger that on application pause. So that's where that's coming from. So if you exit your guardian space on application pause, focus, well, focus is a different one, uh, but on application pause will be true. If you leave the guardian, uh, application pause will be false if you return to the play area. So that's what's triggering that. Um, so we're handling that by creating this method. And then we're using that to set our is OAP, which stands for on application pause um, to match that Boolean that they're passing. And then we have a method called private void is paused, which, which will also take a Boolean. Um, and basically all that's doing is if the Boolean is true, then we're setting the time scale to zero. Um, now the time scale is what controls most of your uh, movements and physics and animations. So like, you know, every time you use time dot delta time, that's relying on your time scale. So this will control any uh, physics events and stuff like that. So um, setting it to zero will basically freeze time and setting it to one will set it back to normal. So if is paused is true, then we set it to zero, which stops time. And if it's false, then we set it back to one. So that time resumes. So in our update method, we're doing uh, just two things really. We are getting the uh, Unity XR method of uh, getting input. So we're looking at our headset variable and we're trying to get the user presence uh, common usage, right? So what that's gonna do is it's gonna return whether or not the user is present, which is uh, whether the headset is on or whatever. And it's going to assign it to our is present variable. So that's what that is. And so now that that's set, we can do the actual check, which is a compound check here. So basically, uh, these first two are coming from the Oculus integration package. So we have this OVR manager, which is uh, doing a lot of stuff for us as well. And so it's got a property here called uh, has VR focus, which is a Boolean as well. And then we have another one called has input focus. So that's also another Boolean. If the app has input focus or if the app has VR focus. So basically we're checking to see if those are false, right? So if not has VR focus, right? So the VR is not focused. So we're not looking, uh, has no input focus. We're not receiving input. If either of those are true, then we should pause, right? Um, and then again, uh, if either of those are false, that's what this, so if, if we do not have focus, then this becomes true, right? Even though it's false. Um, and the same thing here, if we do not have input focus, 
if not is present. So we're checking user presence here. So if the user is not present, then this becomes true. And then uh, of course the last one is not a negative. It's just is OAP. If they've passed to us this event, this on application pause as true, then we should also pause. So it's four checks in one. Uh, it might be a little overkill, but it's better to overkill than to underkill. All right, so this is our, our headless script that's just gonna activate or deactivate the time scale based on whether or not we have focus, have input, is present, and we are not on application pause. Okay, so now that we have seen the script that's going to control time, let's go look at our spawner code. Now, our spawner code is just doing a simple check. We're checking to see if time is stopped. Uh, because like I said, physics will stop when time scale is zero, but the update method won't. So even if time stops and we're instantiating balls, we're still going to keep instantiating balls. So what we're doing is we're doing a little check here to see if time has stopped. If time is equal to one, which means it isn't stopped, then we will instantiate a new ball at the transform position rotation and we will set a little destroy for the ball so that it doesn't uh, consume all of our memory. It destroys itself after a little bit. So that's pretty much all that's doing. We're receiving uh, a ball as the, the thing to instantiate, but it's pretty simple otherwise. So let's go ahead and uh, put on our headset real quick. Okay, so with my headset on, if I start this up, And we'll just, uh, you can see there's a bunch of balls spawning there. We'll switch over to the scene view so that we're not affected by the headset. So you can see the balls just constantly spawning and destroying themselves. And if I take off the headset, immediately that stops. And if I put the headset back on, immediately it comes back on. So there we know that everything is working as it should and you should be able to uh, hit the pause button on your controller and also trigger a pause event there as well. So that's all there is to stopping time. It's uh, actually quite simple once uh, you know what you're checking for. And like I said, this might be overkill. You might get away with uh, just using two of these um, or two of these, but it's better to be safe than sorry since this is being a common problem with getting apps accepted. The last thing that is failing uh, to get accepted, well, this is actually the third thing, um, but uh, that would be a security issue. So if we go over to security somewhere in here, here we go. So it would be security number two the app must request the minimum number of permissions required to function, right? So this is basically saying, um, well, I can click on it. You'll see that they, they really just don't want you to use things that you're not actually using, right? So like the camera, the location, microphones, etc. So if you're not using the microphone in your game, then why are you requesting microphone access? Uh, if you're not using the camera, why are you requesting camera access, that kind of stuff. And the way to check for that is you go into uh, your Oculus integration system. I don't know where you created your uh, Android manifest, but if you create it from here, if you click on Oculus tools, create store compatible manifest, um, it'll create one that's ready to go basically. But what that does is it puts it in your plugins folder and you'll see Android manifest there. And if we go ahead and just pop that open, you have these lines down here that say uses feature and that determines what permissions it's going to ask for. So if you look at yours in there and you see that you've got uh, microphone usage or location or anything like that, that you're not actually using um, and is not part of the experience, then you should just remove that so that you do not have any issues getting your app approved. So a good way to get ahead of yourself or to get ahead of the game is to just make sure to come through here and um, check all of these and make sure that you are meeting 
the requirements for App Lab if you're trying to go there or for the Quest Store if you're trying to go there. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. Very simple stuff, but for some reason it's leading to a huge backlog of approved apps. So please make sure to follow these rules and tips to get your app approved quicker. Uh, uh, this code is available for my Patreon subscribers if you would like to see what it's actually doing, how it's actually doing it. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll keep making videos. Until the next time, I'm still scared this. Peace out.